Strange structures discovered in the Pacific could change our understanding of Earth. Scientists believe they found a window into the dawn of time on Earth, and it's hidden beneath the Pacific Ocean. A team led by geophysicist Simon Lamb, of the University of Wellington and scientist Cornel Durand, of GNS Science, said the key to our past lies in a remote corner of South Africa and way down on the seafloor off the coast of New Zealand. So what do these two sites, on opposite sides of the world, have in common? Together, they shed light on the world in its infancy, and offer unexpected clues about the origins of the planet we know today, and possibly life itself. Writing for the conversation, the scientists explained that their work began after Durand created a new, detailed geological map of an area known as the Barberton Greenstone Belt, which lies in South Africa's Highfelt region. The geological formations in this region have proved difficult to decipher, despite many attempts, the pair write. They claim that the belt's rock bed is inconsistent with our widely accepted understanding of plate tectonics at the time. But, they claim, their new research has offered up the key to cracking this code. Duran's map revealed a fragment of the ancient deep seafloor in the Barberton Greenstone Belt, created some 3.3 billion years ago, when the world was a mere 1.2 billion years old. There was, however, something very strange about the seafloor, Lamb and Durand Wright. And it has taken our study of rocks laid down in New Zealand, at the other end of the Earth's long history, to make sense of it. The two experts argue that the general understanding of early Earth as a fiery ball of molten magma, whose surface was too weak to form rigid plates, and, by extension, suffer earthquakes, is wrong. Rather, they posit, the young planet was continuously rocked by large earthquakes which were triggered each time one tectonic plate slid under another in a subduction zone. Looking at Duran's map of the Barberton Greenstone Belt, they realized its jumbled-up rock layers were reminiscent of more recent submarine landslides that have occurred in New Zealand. These landslides were triggered by great earthquakes along the country's largest fault, the megathrust in the Hikurangi subduction zone, where the bedrock is made of a mishmash of sedimentary rocks. These rocks were originally laid down on the seafloor off the coast of New Zealand some 20 million years ago, on the edges of a deep oceanic trench, which was the site of frequent large earthquakes. By considering the formation of this New Zealand rock bed, the experts claim to have solved the mystery behind the Barberton Greenstone Belt formations. Like its young successor, these structures were the remnant of a gigantic landslide containing sediments deposited both on land or in very shallow water, jumbled with those that accumulated on the deep seafloor, they have concluded. Put simply, if the rock layers in New Zealand were formed by earthquakes, then so, too, were the ones in the Barberton Greenstone Belt, subverting the theory that early Earth wasn't equipped to suffer such tremors. Furthermore, Lamb and Duran suggest that their work may have unlocked other mysteries, too, because, they point out, subduction zones are also associated with explosive volcanic eruptions. They cite the example of Tonga's Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano, which erupted in January 2022 with the energy of a 60-megaton atomic bomb and sent a vast cloud of ash into space, through which, over the subsequent 11 hours, more than 200,000 lightning strikes flashed. In the same volcanic region, underwater volcanoes are erupting an extremely rare type of lava called bonanite. This is the closest modern example of a lava that was common in the early Earth, they add. Lamb and Durand argue that the large quantities of volcanic ash found in the Barberton Greenstone Belt may be an ancient record of similar volcanic violence. And, even more interestingly, they suggest that the associated lightning strikes could potentially have created the crucible for life where the basic organic molecules were forged. In other words, subduction zones are not just the source of tectonic chaos, they could also have been the spark that ignited the flame of life itself. In recent years, scientists have made groundbreaking discoveries in the depths of the Pacific Ocean that have challenged our understanding of Earth's geology and the limits of life. Among these discoveries are strange structures found on the ocean floor, which have the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the planet and its ecosystems. These structures, often referred to as deep-sea vents or hydrothermal vents, are located in the abyssal depths of the Pacific Ocean, where sunlight cannot penetrate and extreme pressure and darkness prevail. They were first discovered in the late 1970s along the Galapagos Rift, a tectonic spreading zone near the Galapagos Islands. 
Since then, similar structures have been found in various locations across the Pacific, including the East Pacific Rise and the Mariana Trench. What makes these structures so remarkable is not only their extreme environment but also the thriving ecosystems they support. Unlike most life on Earth, which relies on sunlight for energy, the organisms living near hydrothermal vents derive their energy from chemicals dissolved in the vent fluids, a process known as chemosynthesis. These vents emit mineral-rich fluids heated by the Earth's internal heat, creating oases of life in the otherwise barren deep-sea landscape. The discovery of these deep-sea vent ecosystems has challenged scientists' understanding of the limits of life on Earth. Previously, it was thought that life could only exist where sunlight penetrated, but these ecosystems have shown that life can thrive in the most extreme conditions imaginable. Moreover, the organisms found near these vents are often highly adapted to their environment, with unique biological and biochemical characteristics. Furthermore, the mineral deposits surrounding these vents contain valuable resources such as copper, zinc, and gold. As our demand for these metals continues to grow, there is increasing interest in mining these deep-sea deposits. However, such activities could have significant environmental consequences, as disturbing these ecosystems could disrupt fragile food chains and harm unique species. In addition to their biological and economic importance, these structures also provide valuable insights into Earth's geology and the processes that shape our planet. The mineral-rich fluids released by hydrothermal vents contribute to the formation of new crust along tectonic spreading zones, offering clues about the dynamics of plate tectonics and the Earth's interior. Overall, the discovery of strange structures in the Pacific Ocean, such as hydrothermal vents, has fundamentally changed our understanding of Earth and its ecosystems. These ecosystems challenge our preconceived notions about the limits of life and provide valuable insights into the geological processes that shape our planet. However, they also raise important questions about conservation and the responsible stewardship of Earth's deep-sea resources. As scientists continue to explore and study these remarkable environments, it is clear that they will play a crucial role in shaping our understanding of the planet for years to come. The exploration of these strange structures in the Pacific Ocean has unveiled not only the remarkable resilience of life but also its astonishing diversity. The ecosystems surrounding hydrothermal vents are home to a wide array of unique species, many of which are found nowhere else on Earth. These include tube worms, giant clams, shrimp, crabs, and microbial communities that form the base of the vent food web. Some of these organisms have evolved specialized adaptations to survive in the harsh conditions of the deep sea, such as heat-resistant proteins and symbiotic relationships with chemosynthetic bacteria. Moreover, the discovery of deep sea vent ecosystems has sparked new avenues of research into astrobiology and the search for life beyond Earth. These extreme environments share similarities with conditions thought to exist on other celestial bodies, such as Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus, which have subsurface oceans and hydrothermal activity. Studying life in Earth's deep-sea vents provides valuable insights into the potential for life to exist in similar environments elsewhere in the universe. Furthermore, the mineral deposits formed around hydrothermal vents have the potential to provide valuable resources for human society. As traditional terrestrial sources of minerals become increasingly depleted, the deep-sea mining industry has set its sights on these underwater treasure troves. However, the environmental impact of deep-sea mining is not fully understood, and there are concerns about the potential damage to fragile deep-sea ecosystems. In response to these concerns, international efforts are underway to study and protect deep-sea vent ecosystems. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea UNCLOS, has established regulations for deep-sea mining in international waters, with a focus on preserving biodiversity and minimizing environmental harm. Additionally, Marine Protected Areas MPAs, have been proposed to safeguard sensitive deep-sea habitats from exploitation. As technology advances, scientists are gaining new tools and techniques to study these remote and inaccessible environments. Remotely operated vehicles ROVs, and autonomous underwater vehicles AUVs, equipped with high-definition cameras and sampling equipment allow researchers to explore and document deep-sea vent ecosystems in unprecedented detail. 
Genetic sequencing and molecular techniques are also being used to unravel the complexities of the microbial communities that thrive in these extreme environments. In conclusion, the discovery of strange structures in the Pacific Ocean, particularly hydrothermal vents, has transformed our understanding of Earth's geology, biology, and potential for life elsewhere in the universe. These ecosystems challenge our preconceptions about the limits of life and offer valuable insights into the fundamental processes that shape our planet. However, they also raise important ethical and environmental considerations regarding the conservation and sustainable use of Earth's deep-sea resources. As we continue to explore and study these remarkable environments, it is essential to balance scientific curiosity with responsible stewardship of the ocean's depths. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.